High blood pressure sets the stage for some serious health risks. It can pave the way for heart disease, strokes, and even kidney problems. But the good news is there are natural ways to reverse it. Let's dive into this important topic. So, what is blood pressure? Think of blood pressure as the force that pushes your blood through your body's blood vessels. It's like the pressure in a water hose when you turn it on. When it's too high, it can cause trouble. So we want to keep it in a good balanced range. You might have noticed that when you get your blood pressure checked, there are two numbers, one on top and one on the bottom. The top number is the systolic blood pressure. It's like the pump when your heart squeezes and sends blood out. And the bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure. It's the relaxation when your heart relaxes and refills. Together, they give you two numbers that show how well your blood is flowing through your body. Your blood pressure isn't the same all day. It's lowest when you're sleeping and goes up when you're on the move. It can also spike when you're pumped up, jittery or doing something active. What is high blood pressure? High blood pressure or hypertension is a condition where the force of blood against the artery walls is consistently too high. You are said to have high blood pressure if your systolic blood pressure readings consistently go above 140 millimeters mercury or your diastolic pressure is higher than 90 millimeters mercury. High blood pressure if left untreated. It can lead to severe health problems like heart disease and stroke. Now, let's explore some natural methods to reverse high blood pressure. There are seven natural ways to reduce blood pressure without medication, and number one on the list is reduce sodium intake. One of the most effective ways to reduce your blood pressure is by cutting down on salt. Aim to keep your salt intake to about two gram a day or less, depending on your doctor recommendation. High salt intake is known to raise blood pressure, but not everyone is affected the same way. Whether your blood pressure is salt sensitive depends on different factors like your ethnicity and potassium intake. Here are some simple ways to cut down on salt in your daily diet. Read labels, check the nutrition labels on packaged foods. Choose items with lower sodium content. Use less salt in cooking. Gradually reduce the amount of salt you add to your food while cooking. Your taste buds will adjust over time. Choose fresh foods. Opt for fresh fruits, vegetables, and meats instead of processed or prepackaged options. They generally have no added salt. Limit restaurant and takeout. Restaurant and takeout meals often have high salt levels. Try to eat out less. And when you do, ask for dishes with less salt. Spice it up. Use herbs, spices, and other seasonings to flavor your food instead of salt. This can add taste without the extra sodium. Rinse canned foods. If you use canned beans or vegetables, rinse them under water before eating. This can wash away some of the salt. Number two, regular exercise. Another very effective way to lower your blood pressure is exercise. Regular exercise makes your heart stronger, and when your heart is strong, it can pump blood more effortlessly. However, avoid heavy lifting and exercises that make you strain and hold your breath. Also, take it easy on activities that involve sudden intense bursts, such as the high-intensity interval training, also known as the HIIT exercise. Always check with your doctor before diving into a new exercise routine to make sure it's safe for you. The ideal type of exercise to help reduce blood pressure should be of moderate intensity and aim for at least 150 minutes of exercise each week. Some simple tips on how to get that 150 minute of exercise each week in a super doable way. Find what you love. The best exercise is the one you enjoy, whether it's biking, swimming, or playing a sport. Pick something that makes you happy so that it won't feel like a chore. Daily activity. Sneak in movement throughout the day. Take the stairs instead of the elevator, walk to the store, or go for a stroll after dinner. 
Little bits of movement throughout the day add up. Start small. If you're not used to it, begin with short sessions, like 10 or 15 minutes, and work your way up. It's not about doing it all at once or going hardcore. The goal is to move regularly and enjoy it. Number three, managing stress. Stress can make your blood pressure go up. Try doing things like yoga, meditation, or deep breathing every day to help manage stress. It can make a big difference in keeping your blood pressure in check. One very important factor in dialing down the stress level is adequate sleep. Don't underestimate the power of a good night's sleep. It's like a reset button for your stress levels. Check out my video on how to fall asleep fast if you have trouble sleeping. Link in the description. Number four, maintaining a healthy weight. Maintaining a healthy weight is crucial in controlling blood pressure. Losing even a few pounds can make a significant difference. If you are not able to shed those extra pounds, simply avoid gaining more weight can still prevent the worsening of your hypertension. Number five, limiting alcohol and caffeine. Reducing alcohol and caffeine intake can also help lower blood pressure. Hence, it's essential to moderate your consumption. Let's talk about managing alcohol and caffeine. Be mindful of your sips. Keep an eye on how much alcohol and caffeinated drinks you're having. Moderation is key. Set a drink limit. Decide how much you'll drink and stick to it. It's like having a plan to help you avoid going overboard. Slow down the sips. Take it easy with the sipping. Slow down the pace and you might find you don't need as much to feel satisfied. Choose wisely. Opt for lower alcohol drinks or decaffeinated options. It's a simple way to cut back without spoiling your enjoyment of the party. Know your triggers. Be aware of situations that make you reach for that extra drink or caffeine boost. Finding alternatives in those moments can be a game changer. Remember, it's not about saying a complete no, but finding a balance that works for you. Number six, quit smoking. Quitting cigarette smoking can help lower high blood pressure. The chemicals in cigarettes can make high blood pressure worse. And smoking is bad for your heart as well. Here's how you can get help and support to quit smoking. Share your plan. Let your friends and family know you're kicking the habit and you'll be amazed at the encouragement you'll get. Find a quitting buddy. Having someone to share the journey with makes it less lonely and more fun. Join a quitting program. Local or online quitting programs are full of tips and advice. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist. They can guide you, suggest strategies, and may even prescribe nicotine replacement therapy to ease the journey. Use apps and texting services. There are cool apps and texting services designed to support quitters. They send you tips, encouragement, and remind you why you're doing this. Reward yourself. Celebrate your victories, big or small. Treat yourself to something you enjoy as a pat on the back for staying smoke-free. You're not alone in this. Building a support team makes the journey easier and way more awesome. Number seven, get enough potassium. Not having enough potassium can crank up your blood pressure, especially if you tend to eat food that is high in salt. Potassium helps balance out the effects of sodium, making your blood vessels more relaxed. This can lead to lower blood pressure. It's like a seesaw, and potassium helps balance things out and keep your blood pressure in checks. So, how much potassium should you consume per day? How much potassium you should aim for daily varies based on your age and gender. For average adult, the recommended amount is around 2.6 to 3.4 gram of potassium per day. It is not that difficult to get enough potassium from your diet. Think bananas, tomatoes, spinach, sweet potatoes, and even yogurt. They're not just tasty, they're also loaded with the good stuff your body needs. But here's the catch. If you've got chronic kidney issues or are taking certain medicines, your potassium levels can become too high, a condition called hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia can also develop in people with type 1 diabetes, congestive heart failure, liver disease, or adrenal insufficiency. 
If you're in the risk zone for too much potassium, it's crucial to chat with your healthcare provider. They can guide you on how much potassium is safe to get from your food, drinks, and any supplements. Turning the tide on high blood pressure without medication is doable, but it's all about making real changes in your lifestyle. Small changes can make a big difference over time. The effort is worthwhile when you start noticing a decrease in your blood pressure. Here's the recap. The seven natural ways to reduce blood pressure without medication. Number one, reduce sodium intake. Number two, regular exercise. Number three, managing stress. Number four, maintaining a healthy weight. Number five, limiting alcohol and caffeine consumption. Number six, quit smoking. Number seven, get enough potassium. Thank you for watching. You might also want to check out my other videos on how to burn belly fat fast and how to reverse clogged arteries naturally without medication on your journey to better health.